Okay, uh, let's get started. And uh, hello, everyone. And uh, thank you for joining this session. And uh, we are very surprised <laughs> to be able to present in such a, a large venue. But uh, we are very honored, and uh, thank you. And uh, today, we will introduce uh, SPDX Lite uh, for the first step to create and operate s bonds uh, in the complex, very complex software supply chains. And uh, we hope uh, there are some useful information for you. And uh, hopefully, uh, someone will join our open source activities. And uh, before starting the session, uh, please uh, let us introduce ourselves briefly. And uh, I'm Norio Kobota from Sony Group Corporation. And uh, I'm a senior open source strategist, uh, Sony Group Corporation, and uh, uh, part of our OSPO, Open Source Program Office in Sony Group. And uh, with open source communities, I'm a Sony representative of uh, OpenChain project and uh, SPDX project. And uh, recently, I assigned from Shane Cochran, where? <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, I assigned a chair of SBOM study group of Open Chain Project. And uh, oh, could you introduce? <laughs> Hello, everyone. So my name is Takashi Ninjoji from Toshiba Corporation. Um, I was the first head of the Open Source Complex Office in my company. And uh, so one of my focus of the open source in enterprise is uh, just the open source strategies. And uh, I represent Toshiba in the Open Chain project, and uh, I also contribute the SPDX project, especially light profile of uh, SPDX 3.0, known as SPDX Light. So to this topic, and uh, well, Nori, let's dive into the main topic. Okay. And uh, firstly, this is the uh, latest slide uh, we are discussing within uh, OpenChain SBOM study group. Nowadays, there are so many uh, best practices and many documents and guidelines around the world, but we still face the uh, many challenges to operate SBOM inside uh, our companies. So we open chain SBOM study group started to discuss what we can do uh, with the community from September. And with this background, uh, we'd like to introduce SPDX Lite, which is a part of the SPDX project from the version 2.2. And SPDX Lite is a result of discussion with Open Chain Japan communities on how to effectively deliver software information between and across complex software supply chains and the result of the contribution to the SPDX project. And we believe that SBOMs requires different things when they are received and when they are delivered. So we discussed to clarify what is really required uh, at each time. And firstly, please imagine about the intake timing. Uh, recently, of course, it is improving, and, uh, but the upstream companies in the software supply chain, there are still a few companies that are not familiar with open source software and also s -bonds. What happens in this case? As you can imagine, they uh, simply download the original source code from the GitHub and so on, and generate a source s bonds with some SCA tools. In such case, the package name, uh, sorry, package name is uh, just a, uh, uh, sorry, name of the archive file. And the uh, license information is generated with uh, completely uh, meaningless information. Of course, this is an extreme uh, example, uh, but these cases uh, often occurs uh, that we can't receive the minimum information, ne uh, minimum necessary information. And uh, the idea is for upstream companies to generate and provide a full s -bond. It's true. And uh, everyone, and uh, every communities, and uh, everyone uh, in this room 
try to uh, resolve and uh, working hard to realize this world. But it will take a little while uh, for every company in the world to do that. And therefore, in reality, uh, when an S-bomb is received, knowledge engineers inside our companies are investigating and analyze the details now. It's now a current situation, I think. And then let's think about the distribution timing. In many cases, the software is part of a commercial product, especially for the Sony Group Corporation. And we are responsible for that product. When something goes wrong or found the vulnerabilities uh, inside of the products or services, our customers rarely look into or analyze the details of the software and fix them, of course. The information they need is what the problem is and uh, how it is affected and when it will be fixed. And uh, fixing these failures, uh, it's our responsibility, the providers, our companies, as a commercial companies. And uh, we believe that the greatest benefit of the SBOM is the ability to provide the required information to each party in a common language and a format such as SPDX without having no, to include the detailed information in each contract, uh, as Shen uh, explained in previous sessions. And uh, so next part, we'll dive into a little details about the standards and the guidelines. I'll pass the button to Tak. Thank you, Nori. <laughs> okay, so uh, SBOM is a uh, great example of the common language and the format, as uh, Nori told. The, similarly, the managing process is crucial in the support chain. So to build trust, each stakeholder adopt the process management standards as a Chain program uh, previously explained in the previous session. The Open Chain project shares open source management practices. So ISYC 5230, uh, Open Chain specification, is a key outcome for the open source license compliance. So this specification requires SBOM management here uh, to identify, review, and approve, uh, approve open source components but not only open source component, components. So in this process, maybe uh, usually, so in enterprise practice, uh, practices, we also uh, treat as a COTS or any other kind of software. And uh, actually, so ISYC 18974, it is called the Open Chain Security Assurance Specification, focuses on vulnerability management. So managing, uh, managing S-bombs is crucial because it is, helps track and fix vulnerabilities uh, during the software development life cycle. So it is also uh, required in SBOM management in this specification. So SBOM and the BEX are essential to improving information sharing because they are machine readable data. So SBOM includes software composition and uh, provenance and license and copyright details for comp license compliances. And BEX uh, handles vulnerability management and is used with security advisories uh, during incident responses. So typically, S1 and BEX uh, link to, uh, excuse me, uh, link to CVE and its affected components. So many of, manage, uh, many of you uh, managed software composition before the word S1 uh, became so popular nowadays. So SPDX Lite is one of the, these early initiatives. It's a subset of SPDX. And they're focused on key information like package details. And uh, the idea came from the Open Chain, Pro, uh, Open Chain Project Japan Working Group. And uh, this, uh, sorry, the company, companies with commercial products need to analyze uh, their components as Nori explained be, uh, before. SPDX has many properties. So uh, we discussed how to simplify it. So as you can see, uh, SPDX, uh, in SPDX version 2 series, uh, such as, uh, 59, as ISO 5962 and the SPDX 2.3, SPDX Lite is Annex. And then now Nodi will explain what SPDX Lite is in SPDX 3.0. 
Okay, thank you, Tuck. And uh, next, let me introduce the SPDX Lite in SPDX 3.0. And uh, SPDX Lite is essentially uh, designed for license compliance while adhering to the SPD, uh, full SPDX spec. And uh, firstly, there is no difference uh, in mandatory attributes. You know, however, some items are specified what to write in the content. And uh, secondly, providing uh, license information is not mandatory in original version 3.0 spec, but the light profile is, of course, uh, coming from license compliance, so uh, it uh, should be required item. And finally, there are uh, uh, some attributes that should be filled in as much as possible for the recommendation. As many of you may know, license compliance process is a task is a very time consuming uh, task. So they, these are just recommendations, but it would be better to light for reducing these tasks. And everything else is optional. These are the light design principle. And uh, here's the overview data structure for the light profile. As Ninja's attack explained, uh, we basically think that passing package level information correctly is the most important thing. And the first step for the detailed analysis by specialists and we assume these are the mandatory fields for the crawl-level uh, companies. So far, I introduced an um, overview of SPDX Lite specifications, and uh, we believe SPDX Lite is a fairly simple specification. But at the same time, I also believe it's a little hard to understand just reading the specifications. So we started to collaborate and create a very simple sample to check if it is um, in, uh, fits into our use cases. Today, we don't have enough time to explain the details, uh, but uh, you can find some simple example from the GitHub shown in this slide. And uh, of course, SPDX Lite is coming from the license compliance but of course, uh, we are discussing it uh, with a security perspective. We are working with security engineers in the open chain working group and uh, uh, open chain communities and uh, to create simple uh, samples to see if the combination with security profile in SPDX 3.0 and uh, backs can be used successfully with SPDX Lite. And uh, we also working with SPDX team and a community to review our understanding is correct or not. These examples are also available on the GitHub. So, Tak, could you please uh, okay. introduce? Yes, and uh, before we dive into the SMO attributes, so let's look at the current situation. So many laws and, uh, laws and regulations, standards, and the guidelines now mention or imply SVM and BEX. So uh, some texts require the uh, SVM and BEX, and even if not explicitly stated, uh, after executive order uh, 14028 and NTU's minimal elements for SVM uh, released in the United States, so many governments and industries discuss and publish SBOM guides that often differing uh, interior elements. And uh, CISA released the third edition of framing software component transparency uh, this month. And the FDA uh, has issued guidelines for medical device manufacturers. And the C in Europe, CRA, has issued the guidelines for medical, uh, sorry, uh, seem likely to be published in the, how to say this, official gadgets soon. And the, uh, in Europe, the European Commission has issued, uh, as far as I know, uh, has issued specific documents about S1, but in this situation, uh, Germany, in Germany, so BSI, the in German uh, agency in charge of information security, uh, has issued the TR03182 Part 2 as a guideline for preparing the CRA SBOM guideline. 
And uh, with the latest version, it's 2.0 and 0 has released this October, this month. In Japan, so METI, the Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry uh, the, published the second version of the S1 guidelines for business, uh, for business guidelines. And uh, there are, it's like just a tiny part of the, what's being published. There are some S1 guidelines in the world, so like uh, Netherlands, India, and China or so. And uh, as we saw earlier, there are two international standards for the process management. 5230 for open source license compliance, and uh, 189, uh, sorry, 18974 for the security, uh, sorry, security assurance, so voluntary management. And uh, this one, the SPDX, ISO IC 5962, and the Cyclone DX, ECMA 424 are international standards for S1 data formats based on open source uh, activities. And uh, both of them are international standards. At, uh, as you see. And uh, there are also many industry uh, initiatives uh, in medical devices and uh, credit payment and automotive and the open chain telco is, uh, telcos. So in particular, if you look at the statement that refer to the requirements for s uh, content, you will see uh, they almost all refer to the NTIA minimum elements. In this context, the CISA uh, framing, uh, in short, the CISA framing is very important. So, next slide. So let's briefly look at the NTM email elements and the SMA attributes in CISA's document. So CISA's framing so the edition is providing updates from a practical perspectives, especially license compliance. So CISA's framing will not replace the NTM minimum elements. It stated that the CISA has the authority to revise the NTS minimum elements, but it seems that this framing document is not yet to replace the NTS minimum. In the NTS minimum elements, so the hashes and the licenses, copyright information are recommended. On the other hand, in the CISA framing document, they are now required. And regarding dependency relationships, uh, qualification has been made between the primary components and the dependent components. So some people think that the uh, NTA minimum elements will be revised around 2025, but from the impression I've got, uh, it seems that the CSIS framing this document is something familiar from the past bit of license compliance in practice in enterprise. So we, it's okay, so uh, we will adapt this document in enterprise practices. So this table compares the item by item. And, uh, sorry, this is just in progress work. What attributes or elements are required in the guidelines or the standards, and how they are mapped in s data formats like SPDX and the CycleDix. So many people are working on similar work, I know, and we are one of them. So well, highlight what we find characteristic and, uh, but the font is very small, I'm so sorry. But uh, I hope it's enough for an, uh, take an overview. So we are working openly with Google Express C, so please access it. And uh, I may still make mistakes, so any advice and help will be greatly appreciated. So let's uh, compare CSS baseline attributes with other documents, uh, requirements. As we saw earlier, so the NTA minimum elements uh, align well with CSA baseline attributes. So BSI uh, requirements are similar, quite similar, but have some unique items. The IMDRF and the FDA have also unique uh, requirements. The Y PCI does now. Now, so let's take a look at how elements are mapped into S1 data formats. Uh, on the left, in LED, are CSA's based baseline attributes and the BSI data fields. And the third column uh, in blue is the Open Chain Telco SDM guide based on SBDX 2.2.1, uh, uh, known as the ISO 5962, and also based on the SBDX 2.3. This guide from the Telco work group of the Open Chain projects and uh, many uh, taken initiatives by and Nokia and uh, Ericsson, the, which are very famous in Europe and uh, worldwide, but they're mainly working in the European regions, 
uh, European-based companies, and it's useful for other industries too. And it's, this one is a specific slide from uh, Sosori. The Telecom S bomb guide uh, is shown, but. Uh, According to the SPDX light of SPDX version 2 series, uh, it's similar to the Teco guide, but uh, SPDX version 2 some lack, lacks of some uh, attributes. So like, uh, sorry, this is very small text, but uh, uh, it's in SPDX 2.x, uh, SPDX in version 2, uh, crypt, uh, checksum, uh, cryptographic hash, and the uh, relationship, and it's mainly, uh, it's lack information. Because it's mainly, for this SPDX height uh, of version two, it's mainly focused on the, somehow, embedded software license compliance. So it, the software is uh, merged into one binary. So the Teleco SM guide is the best choice. So apparently, so Teleco SM guide is the best choice if you want to meet CISA's baseline attributes with SPDX 2.0. Uh, two point, uh, version two series. In gray one, uh, the last one is the SPDX light, the light profile of SPDX 3.0, and the left uh, light one is the uh, Cyclone DX uh, 1.6 ECMA 44. So I'm not conf <laughs> confident about the Cyclone DX, but uh, it seems okay for CSS based attributes and the BSS data fields. So using these three formats can help meet CSS baseline attributes, I think. So these are the items that CSA frame specific and optional. So one of them is relationships for heritage and pedigree. Uh, currently, so Teleco SM guide so doesn't require that, doesn't require, but this data field is supported by SPDX version two. So uh, as optional, we can use the relationship data fields uh, with certain values, such as uh, generated from or so dependent of. And the SPDX 3.0 uh, and the Cyclone DX also have the properties that corresponding to this attribute. And the other two, uh, this one and the, this one, uh, two are relating supporting information which FDA and uh, IMDRF require. So FDA software level support uh, can only be used with some kind of uh, comment field in Teleco SM guide because SPDX version two doesn't have a corresponding data field. Uh, on, the other, uh, on the other hand, SPDX 3.0 has a support level. So as in SPDX we can, uh, so as in uh, SPDX Lite, we can use this. So FDA, uh, end of support date and IM, sorry, uh, IMDRF, uh, life cycle of a device or end of a support date. The same comment period as before can be used in ISO 5962, uh, and the valid until date can be used in the SPDX 2.3. So, uh, yes, SPDX 3.0 has valid until date. The other part, as I know, so Cyclone DX has, uh, doesn't have information on this type of uh, supporting information. So this is my guess, but uh, as far as I know, uh, sorry, so this information may be updated more frequently than the software composition. Uh, because of this, so this is my guess, it may be need a policy to manage it uh, separately from the S1 in Cyclonics design. Uh, this, but this is my personal opinion. So these are the attributes that only mentioned by BSI. The for SBOM uh, metadata, so for the document, so SBOM URI, and the for software components, uh, component file name, executable or not, and uh, archive or not, and the, the ah, yes, uh, structured or not, and the URI of the source code, and the deployable component, and the associated license. So some of these are supported by the SBOM data format specification as you see, but the, uh, however, uh, this is just my personal opinion, but the, uh, I believe there should be more discussion about whether these attributes uh, should be mandatory for software components. So I want to understand the background and the purpose of these requirements, keep it a one out or associated licenses. So, but my, also this is my guess. 
to create a process that align with license conditions and the component dependencies, then having this information could be useful. However, uh, the, 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 and the, it's automation processes. But, but if the goal is to create a process that aligns with license conditions component dependencies, um, however, the, to achieve these goals, it seems that we should also consider automating the creation of this information in the software <laughs> development lifecycle. So all right, uh, now let's review how the requirements for each industry are being met. For IMDRF and uh, FDA, there are some specific items need consideration, uh, as we saw earlier. But a telecom guide and the SP light for of 3.0 and Cyclondex, they seem to be mostly okay. The full payment card industry data security data standard. Uh, uh, sorry, card payment card industry and data security standard. So telecom guide, SP light, and the Cyclondex, they seem to be fine. So uh, we've examined the mapping of uh, attributes to the SMO data format. So in practice, it's essential to analyze and discuss the content of these attributes in detail. For example, CSS maturity level and uh, BSI level of details. Uh, this, the CSS, sorry, uh, CSS maturity level uh, combines the depths and the widths, uh, broads of dependencies and the attributes levels. And uh, on the scope of resolution, of uh, how to say scope the, of the relationships uh, between the CSAs and the BSIs are different. So if you are interested in this discussion about levels, so I hope you join SMM study group of the open chain projects, which Nori will introduce later. So that there are many uh, other aspects to consider about S1 and BX operation. So we must improve our understanding of S1 and BX practices across the sub, uh, supply chain. So here are the five examples. Uh, this one, and the, for example, uh, S1 maturity model or level of the details and the attributes and the S1 and BX, uh, how to S1 and BX bindings. So this affects information interoperability. For example, BSI's guidelines suggest including the top component of outside the driver. So how should we express the uh, relationships in SBDX and uh, CycloneDX? So another example is the uh, relationship between SBOM and DEX, so which considers digital signature and updated frequency. So should they be separated, uh, operated separately or links? If links, in which direction? So in certain linkage direction cases, even if the software composition doesn't change, the S1 must be updated as the BEX is updated. So or should BEX uh, be embedded into the S1? But, uh, also, the CSA and the BSI document suggests that they should be, uh, sorry, uh, S1 and BEX should be separate. But sometimes embedded is acceptable. So we need to discuss uh, about S1 operation so, uh, within the author or distributor or consumer and uh, how uh, they exchange the information. And we should also uh, consider about S1 and BEX in the software development lifecycle. So we need uh, process and tools and automation that anyone in the supply chain can implement. So, so there may be still be more issues to clarify, so like whether everyone should follow equivalent procedures or have choices. So I have to say, so can we explore practical how-tos for these topics? So if you have any answers, or ideas, or thoughts, let's work together. So the next is the last topic in the talk. Nori will uh, introduce it. Yeah, thank you, Tak. And uh, this is the uh, last slide, and uh, just a promotion. <laughs> uh, we, uh, as I told and uh, Tak introduced, we created uh, the Asbom Study Group and the Open Chain Project. And we started to the regular meeting on when? 
first Wednesday of every month. So hopefully uh, someone will join this work group. Uh, first of, firstly, we, you can send the email to this Aspom study group mailing list. And after that, we will introduce some uh, Slack channel and so on. So we hope uh, someone will join uh, this uh, Aspom study group. And of course, we are based on the Linux Foundation and the OpenChain project. We are now collaborating with only SPDX team, but uh, we'd like to collaborate with, of course, OWASP and the uh, uh, Cyclone DX team. And in future, we'd like to uh, learn a lot from other communities. So please help us if you can. And uh, Thank you. Uh, the last uh, 10 minutes, but uh, after this session, the tax track will be held. So, if, uh, of course, uh, please ask anything. But uh, are there are any question. Uh, are there aren't any questions. We will finish a little early for the tax track. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any questions? Yes. Or comments? Please. Thank you for a uh, good presentation. Uh, perhaps uh, I also uh, consider about this item, but uh, just uh, one idea. Uh, do you think the, those SBOM, uh, SPDX light and profile and uh, blah, 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 able uh, in, in future, uh, is it expected as a legal evidence for a license uh, description or just a technical reference document? Uh, be, uh, I, I think the uh, copyright law case uh, in, in future, uh, some copyright law uh, uh, starting legal fight with the company with the misdescribed uh, SBOM. In that case, perhaps uh, the company have to point it out this is mis -dis just a misdescription and uh, uh, some uh, legal testimony getting uh, from the uh, correspond person. In, in those case, in those case, uh, we able to use that S bomb from supplier as uh, uh, some uh, to, 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 to use legal uh, evidence in this day. Uh, perhaps uh, we have to uh, make a, not just a S bomb, but uh, also uh, uh, contract document and uh, who uh, delivered to SBOM and uh, when delivered to SBOM and uh, which uh, to use the generate SBOM, blah, blah, blah. Uh, sorry. Uh, okay. And, uh, uh, if, do, mm, yeah, if I, I understand, <laughs> I understand your sorry. question correctly. Uh, is the SBOM will be the evidence or legal material? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, in the future, in future. but uh, I'm not a lawyer, and uh, Tak is also not a lawyer, so we can't answer your questions. Mm. But uh, it's, uh, I'm not sure. But uh, it uh, depends on the, uh, each contract, and uh, as as Shane explained, it is better than the each uh, proprietary contract or. Mm. Uh, it's a de facto, a de jure standard. It is a much better, I think. Mm -hmm. It's my opinion. Do you have any? Almost the same, almost the same. It depends on the business conditions. Mm -hmm. If uh, SPAM treated as a business delivery, 
So it will somehow uh, affect, affected by legal contractions, might be. But uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Just a technologist. Uh, yeah. uh, perhaps uh, it's from have to be uh, passed to end user with the uh, final product. So mm -hmm. uh, I just uh, imagine that those uh, conflict, uh, com uh, complicated mm -hmm. uh, use case of this one. Yeah. Just uh, I, I thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions? Nothing? Nothing. OK. OK, thank you very much for attending. Uh, we will finish our presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> sorry, this is my actual question to your audience. I'm so sorry to take your time. So how many people working with SPDX in your practice? <laughs> Maybe you can raise your hand. Oh. Not so there, uh, not, so, not so many. So how about the Cyclone DX? Oh, it's only, only one. Okay. A few people, oh, okay. So any other one is just both data formats you, is used in, the, in your business practices, S1, uh, SPDX and Cyclone DX? Not so often. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, the, actually one question, so, so, so. so are there any people in the working with the uh, Cyclone DX community about the uh, S-Bomb? Really? Please connect. <laughs> <laughs> so as Peter uh, explains, the S-Bomb study group is mainly working, uh, organizing the open chain project and uh, under the operator of the uh, Rails Foundation. So we are very familiar with SPDX, but uh, there are so few people in the Cyclone DX community. So, if we cooperate, we really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks.